Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us from all around the world today for our webinar on Your Year Ahead. My name is Elaine, and I'm Liaison Officer with the Faculty of Engineering at McMaster University. So this webinar will be a half an hour presentation where I'm going to walk you through all 12 months of your next year, followed by a Q&A session with our international students. Um, I just want to note that this uh, webinar is going to proceed as if the year ahead is, um, is going as expected, but if anything happens, we will absolutely let you know, and uh, all of the updates will also be posted on our website, so be sure to check that frequently. All right. So again, welcome. Thank you for joining us from around the world. If it is morning, afternoon, or evening, I'm excited to be here with you today. So the first thing I want to say is welcome to the Fireball family. So you might be wondering, what is that? So the Fireball is our symbol here at, at the Faculty of Engineering, and you can actually see it behind me on the ground there. Uh, it's actually uh, on the ground in front of our engineering building on campus, and you're gonna be seeing it a lot throughout your time here. And the reason we use the word family is because um, it just, we're really close-knit community here, and we really are uh, very tight-knit, and we're all about collaboration, which I will talk about in a minute. So a bit about McMaster University as a whole. So we are a top 100 university in world rankings, and we rank second in global impact ranking, and that's through the Times Higher Education. And this is important because it means you're going to be attending a world-class university and receiving a world-class education. Um, so we are actually here at McMaster University, Canada's most research intensive university. I'll talk a little bit more about research opportunities later on in the presentation, but this just goes to say that um, we're really focused on research at the faculty, departmental, and university level here. We also have a strong focus on collaboration, not competition. What this means is that you're not going to be competing with your neighbor, you're going to be working with your neighbor let's say on a group project or studying together, there's always gonna be collaboration between you and your peers. We also have a commitment to diversity. We have international students from more than 110 countries around the world, and we are very excited for you to join us as well. So, wondering what comes next? Let's get started. So the first month, so you've accepted your offer, yay, and then what happens next? So May, the most important thing is applying for residence. So applications are due June 1st. And I want you guys to take a screenshot. I want you to write down that deadline. Do not miss it. It's very important. As international students, you're guaranteed residence, um, but you still must apply. The application, it's not hard. Um, you need to... Um, Write a little profile about yourself. Uh, do you like waking up early? Do you like staying up late? Listening to music while you study or studying in quiet? And then you're gonna be ranking what room styles you prefer. And then you're gonna submit your application and your $300 deposit um, before the deadline. And applications are gonna open in early May. Um, another thing you are going to add on your application is whether you're interested in living learning communities. And there's actually one done through the Faculty of Engineering that you might be um, interested in. And there's lots of others available as well. There's different residence styles available. We have apartment style rooms where everybody's going to have their own room. And then there's like a little lounge kitchen area. Um, we have more traditional dorm rooms where there's, um, you know, might be uh, there's two beds, two desks, a little mini fridge. And then there's a kitchen down the hall, for example. We have older buildings that are beautiful and covered in ivy, and we have lots of newer residence buildings as well. Our residences are safe and secure living environments. We have 24 seven coverage and dedicated community advisors. So these are called CAs and they're gonna be, um, they're gonna be available to you at all times so that if, there, if you have a problem you need help with, if there's just something you, you, know, you need to talk to someone about, they're there for you and they're there for you 24 seven. Um, we also require meal plans for students living in residence, um, and this basically because the university doesn't want you to starve. Um, so, but there's lots of different styles of or different sizes of meal plans you can get. Um, so you can kind of get one that works for you, and there's plenty of food accommodations available all across campus as well. 
So June, June, you're going to be picking your courses um, in two weeks. So we have a series of webinars happening every Tuesday, same time, same place. Um, and the one in two weeks is going to be about academic advising. So I will just touch on it briefly now. Um, so what's going to happen is you're going to get a level one enrollment date. Level one means first year. It's at the end of June this year. And that's when you're going to be um, picking your courses and your electives. For some of you, depending on your program, um, you are going to be uh, block enrolled in your core courses and then would pick your own electives. But we will uh, explain this whole process to you um, uh, the closer uh, we get to June as well. But our academic advisors are gonna be with you every step of the way. We have advisors for each of our programs and disciplines and um, they're, they're there for you throughout your whole time at the program. So July. So we have this great program where you can connect with a student ambassador digitally, either through email or Instagram, actually. Um, so feel free to use this. Um, I believe we sent it out in an email or if you uh, if you're looking for the link, just send us a quick note and uh, and we can send you that. So what it is is students from all of our different programs. Um, and they are they write a little profile on themselves. There's a picture and then you can connect with them So if you wanted to talk to someone from one of our programs or even one of our upper year disciplines uh, Just connect with them through our digital ambassador program and in addition we have um, inter current international students here to uh, answer uh, some questions and share their experiences after uh, our presentation in just a few minutes um, as you know, there are four programs within the Firebell family we have engineering computer science, Bachelor of Technology, or BTech, and Integrated Biomedical Engineering and Health Sciences, or iBiomed. So August. So August is all about getting ready to come. Um, so you're going to want to start thinking about packing. Um, in Hamilton, there are four distinct seasons. Uh, you know, winter, which can be uh, pretty cold. Uh, spring and fall, which can be, you know, around a warm or a cool temperature. And then summer, which I think is hot. Uh, but when I met with students from India and uh, the Middle East last year, they said, Elaine, 30 degrees is not hot. And I'm, okay. Um, and actually, our students will say, don't buy your winter gear until you get here. Uh, that's what they recommend purchasing that uh, in Canada. So then you're going to be arriving in Canada. Uh, we have a welcome week and also an international student pre-orientation. So I would just recommend wait on buying your flights until you hear from us about the dates for those programs and also the registration. So Hamilton. So our country is Canada, our province is Ontario, and our city is Hamilton. Uh, we are the ninth largest city in Canada, and we're really conveniently located. We're 45 minutes from Toronto, which I'm sure you've heard of, and uh, 45 minutes as well from Niagara Falls. And there's lots of different ways to get around. We have Go Transit, um, which is a train or a bus that can take you to all of our major cities. We have Via Rail, which is a train system. So there's lots of different ways to get between the cities in Southern Ontario. Welcome week. So welcome week. Our students are going to talk a bit about in a minute um, because it's so wonderful and so awesome. Um, but a little bit about Canvas first. Um, McMaster is unique in that it's the really perfect mix of city and nature. So not only are you 10 minutes from downtown, um, you're also situated on 300 acres of natural protected land. So you could hop on a bus and be downtown in 10 minutes or you could honestly leave your residence and pick up a trail right there and go on a beautiful half hour hike uh, through the forest and down to the water. Um, so it's just a really great combination of both and, uh, and you will love it once you see it. September. So this is when classes begin. Exciting. Um, so the, di the four different programs, um, they're a little bit different. So I'll talk about them all. So engineering you're gonna be starting in a common first year called Engineering One. So everybody's in the same classes, you're all um, learning the same stuff. And the reason why we do this is we want everybody to get a really strong foundation of engineering knowledge. And then what this does is it allows you um, to be able to pick an upper year discipline that you're really interested in, uh, which I will talk a bit more about that process later. Um, computer science is direct entry program. So you start right into computer science and then you graduate um, in four years or longer with a Bachelor of Applied Science. 
Uh, BTEC is a four and a half year program. And as you know, uh, you would have applied either directly into automation engineering technology, automotive and vehicle engineering technology, or biotechnology. And then that's the program that you follow for your four and a half years. And iBioMed, similar actually to engineering, also has a common first year. And then um, at the end, you're gonna be deciding a couple of different things uh, at the end of your first year, which I will talk about in a bit as well. One of the things we like to talk about at McMaster Engineering is um, degree plus. So you're getting a world-class education, a world-class degree, but what else are you getting? So we talk about something called degree plus experience. So degree plus experience means is that there's so much more, there's so much more to offer you um, in addition to your degree here at McMaster. And one of those ways is actually getting involved in clubs and teams. There are more than 300 clubs and teams available to our students. Um, and I like to say that if you can think of it, it probably exists. And if it doesn't, you can start it. Um, so, you know, some examples within the Faculty of Engineering or the McMaster Engineering Society, Formula Electric, uh, Sumo Bots, which are wrestling robots, um, Women in Engineering and Engineers Without Borders, if you're interested in more society-minded clubs, uh, the McMaster Engineering Musical, which is amazing um, because our students literally, they write, they direct, they dance, they choreograph, they play in the pit band, they act, they sing, they do everything. It's really wonderful. Uh, we have a rocketry team and concrete toboggan as well. Um, and there is course credit available for some technical and non-technical teams uh, in your upper years. So volunteering and working. So there are lots of different opportunities for both of these things here in the Faculty of Engineering. We have undergraduate research positions. Um, so as I mentioned before, so McMaster is renowned for its research. So there are so many different ways you could get involved um, through research labs with professors or through a specific lab or a graduate student. Um, so there's lots of opportunity for research if that's something that you're interested in. We have student work programs, and this is actually the photo up on the screen, is uh, Rafi, Aditya, and Rafsania who are here with us today. Um, and they um, applied to the International Student Work Program, and they worked with us in the recruitment office this year, which was really exciting. Um, and then there's other programs as well. Um, you could work at other places across campus, um, and these are available for uh, international students to demonstrate financial need. And then we have uh, faculty events that you can volunteer for. You can volunteer for Fall Preview, May at Mac, March Break, First at, first at Mac. So there's so many different options um, for you to get involved. October. October will be your first reading week. Um, so this is a chance to study. Definitely make sure you do a bit of studying and also catching up on sleep, um, but kind of an opportunity to explore. Uh, Hamilton has over 120 beautiful waterfalls. We're known as the uh, waterfall capital of the world. There's Westdale, which is a hub for student living. That's a 10 minute walk from campus. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Westdale in a minute. Downtown, you could take a 10 minute bus ride. You could visit all sorts of awesome restaurants and stores. Super Crawl is, ha happens um, on a couple of Fridays a year. And it's where there's live music and art and it's wonderful. And to get to these types of things, you have a couple of options. You could walk. Uh, there's uh, HSR buses. Um, so uh, your bus pass is actually included with your tuition. Um, so when you get here in the fall, just go grab your sticker. And we do have rentable bikes too, which is kind of fun. Uh, you just punch in your credit card, you rent the bike, and then you don't even have to return it to the same spot, which is really nice. Um, and then a lot of our students take advantage of day trips to Toronto because it's so close. You can jump on a bus and be there in 45 minutes. So November, this is when we might start seeing some snow um, and also midterms. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about some safety and support services uh, available on campus. Uh, there's a safety app, so you can download that when you get here. I definitely recommend doing that. We also have SWAT. Uh, so what this is, it's a, is, it's a walk home service. So you can, um, let's say you were studying late in the library and uh, you wanted someone, you know, maybe it's a five, 10 minute walk to your residence building. You want someone to walk you there, no problem. You just give them a call and they'll be there. Uh, International Student Services has all sorts of supports available um, for you and all sorts of programming. So you're definitely gonna get in contact with them uh, when, uh, when you get here later on. Um, and they'll also assign you an upper year mentor, which is great. 
And we have a student success center. That's just another, uh, there's so many supports available uh, for you through this uh, center as well. So something definitely worth exploring. The McMaster community. We have cultural clubs, religious and spiritual clubs, multi-faith resources. There's a state-of-the-art gym. We have sports facilities, a wellness center with lots of focus on mental health. Um, there's a university health insurance plan, MSU health and dental plan. So basically, there's all of these things available for you as a McMaster student. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about anything that might be available, just let us know. December. So December is going to be your first round of university exams. These will be your exams from um, your first term and then uh, hopefully we'll see more snow in December and then it's a two-week holiday break between the terms. And at this point, you know, you might start to feel like Canada, McMaster is feeling like home. You'll have made friends through residence, through classes, through your first semester and you're really starting to get the hang of things here. January. So January is going to be the start of your second term. This is when you're going to be getting back into the swing of things. There's a frost week, which is like welcome week, but you know, winter themed uh, for reorientation for the term. There's a McMaster Engineering Fireball, which is a formal dance where you can get dressed up and go with your friends. Uh, there's uh, Delta Hacks, which you may have heard of. It's a 24 hour hackathon that we organize as well. So there's lots of different ways to get involved. I'm going to talk a little bit about co-op. I'm not going to go into too much detail because next Tuesday is our co-op webinar. So make sure you sign up for that as well. Um, but just to touch on it briefly, um, our world-class co-op program is flexible and optional for engineering, comp sci, and I biomed, and it's mandatory for BTEC. Um, the great thing about our co-op program is you can do it your way. So what this means is you can do co-op when it's good for you and when it suits you throughout your degree. We have four, eight, 12, or 16 month terms available. Um, and you can, you're, can apply for your co-op work permit and you're eligible for this with your Canadian study permit. Um, if you have any questions about this, just send us an email, but typically um, you can work with the co-op office when you arrive to sort this out. We have one-on-one -on -one advising with 15 plus co-op staff. Um, so we have all of these events and workshops and everything available to you. Um, we have networking events. Um, I'm gonna talk about our um, employer um, of the week program we do. There's resume critiques, uh, interview workshops, all sorts of different supports. We are here for you and to help you be successful. A few fast facts about our co-op program. We have had 10,000 student co-op students in over 30 countries. We have a 50,000 Canadian uh, average annual salary for our co-op students. Um, so that would be for the, for the full 12 months. Uh, you're not gonna make 50,000 in four months, I wish. Um, there's 4,000 plus jobs available each year for students. Um, and these are actually posted on a job board that's exclusive to you. Um, so this is this job board is just so that you can um, have access to all sorts of different jobs and uh, submit your applications for them. Um, so for McMaster, 94% of our graduates find employment uh, within two years. And for engineering, 98% of our employers would rehire a Mac Eng student. And this is just because they love you guys so much, they can't wait to have you back. Uh, the last three couple points I wanna make about COA. We are in the top 100 of the world's most employable graduates, according to the QS rankings. We have over 750 hiring employers, including Apple, IBM, NASA, GE, Hash, Tesla, and more. And as I mentioned, we are the only university in the world to offer an employer of the week series. Um, so this is where we bring employers to you. So we bring them to campus. So you could do networking events, activities, workshops. You can get to know them right on your own home turf. February. So this is where your second reading week will be. So again, make sure you study, uh, catch up on sleep, um, but you can also use this time to catch up with friends, um, work on assignments, and ooh, we bring in uh, therapy dogs. Um, when you are stressed out studying for midterms, uh, we bring in some puppies and you can pet them, play with them, kind of hang out, and it's a really nice break from studying. So like I mentioned, I was gonna talk a little bit more about what happens next. 
Um, you don't totally need to worry about this yet, but it's, it's great to know uh, how it's gonna work for you uh, for next spring. So we'll start with engineering. So for engineering, we have 10 different disciplines and two five-year program options. All right, let's see if I can list them. Civil engineering, chemical engineering, materials engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, computer engineering, mechatronics engineering, engineering physics, mechanical engineering, and chemical engineering and bioengineering. Whew, got them. Um, so what at the next year, you're gonna be ranking your, uh, your choice of disciplines. And what you can also do is you can also choose our five-year program options uh, and management and, and society. So you would combine these with one of the engineering disciplines. So for example, it could be materials engineering and management, or it could be mechatronics and society. Um, and for the management program, if you're interested in business, finance, administration, uh, this is the program that's going to be uh, right for you. Um, and it can also lead to an accelerated MBA at select institutions. And the Anne Society program, this is if you're interested in innovation, the environment, the world around you, human-centered design. Uh, this program goes through a lot of that world and also can open uh, your schedule up to complete a minor. So computer science. So as I mentioned before, it's a Bachelor of Applied Science and it's a direct entry from first year all the way through. And uh, you can actually add a minor to your computer science degree. There's over 50 plus different minors available. So if you wanted to do computer science with a minor in music or a minor in economics, for example, that, that, that would work for you. Uh, Bachelor of Technology. So this program, you're gonna be starting in your discipline. So for example, Automation Engineering Technology. And the neat thing about BTEC is that in four and a half years, you're not only going to get your BTEC degree, but you're also going to achieve an advanced diploma and a certificate in business management, along with 12 months of co-op work experience. That's a lot to, uh, lots have been in four and a half years. Um, so that's really great. And last but not least, like biomed. So like engineering, it's a common first year. And then at the end of first year, you're gonna be deciding whether you wanna to go the to health sciences route or the bachelor of engineering route. So for the engineering uh, pathway, that's a bachelor of biomedical engineering. And then you combine it with one of our disciplines, uh, the ones that I mentioned through engineering. So for example, biomedical engineering and chemical engineering. Uh, if you wanna go the uh, honors bachelor of health sciences route, uh, then you end up specializing in health, engineering, science, and entrepreneurship. Another thing you're gonna be doing next spring is finding off-campus housing. So I mentioned how all international students are guaranteed residents, um, but residence is only for our first years. Um, but don't worry, uh, finding off-campus housing is, uh, is not too scary. Uh, what tends to happen is um, our engineering students uh, within the faculty, they tend to you know, find their friends and group off, or perhaps you find people to live with your residents. Um, and then uh, you go out and you look at some housing options, and then together you can pick a place to live. Um, if you're interested, you could live in an apartment, if you had perhaps a smaller group, or um, you could live in a house. So for example, the house on the slide here um, would be a house in, our, in the Q community of Westdale. Um, so I would suspect this house might have, you know, two kitchens, a couple of bathrooms, and maybe five bedrooms. Um, so you and a group of five friends could live, live in something like that. Uh, there's safe areas, reasonable rent, I would say around $500 a month, but definitely this could go up or down from that. So make sure you, um, are looking at uh, the price when you're setting your budget. And all of these uh, neighborhoods are walking distance to grocery stores, pharmacies, libraries, community centers, you name it. And they're also within walking distance of campus. Um, so like maybe 10, 15 minutes, uh, you, you would be walking to your classes. Okay. So April, you made it. So April is when you're going to be doing your next set of final exams, the last of your first year. Um, but there's all sorts of other opportunities to get involved. Like uh, you could take a second break to volunteer at our first robotics competition. In April, you can congratulate yourself on finishing first year at your top 100 university and say, see you next year to all the friends you made in residence. One last thing I wanted to mention is our student success rate. So 96.5% of first year engineering students achieve success. What this means is that almost every one of you is gonna be moving from first year to second year.
And this is special because, you know, a lot, a lot of the times I talk to students and parents and they're amazed that this is so high. And it's because of all the supports available for you here. We have academic advisors and wellness centers and accessibility services. You're, and you're never going to be alone. If you want someone to study with, there will be someone there. If you need, you know, people to help you with your project, there will be people there. So there's always resources um, and you're going to be so supported. And that definitely contributes to our high success. Rate. So next to May, take a break. You earned it. So May is the start of the summer semester. So there's a couple of different things that you can do in this semester. You can register for next year's courses. You could complete a co-op. Um, you can enroll in summer school courses if that's what you wanted to do. Um, and you also can uh, work off campus each summer with a valid study permit. This is great. Um, and there's a great Government of Canada website. Um, if you send me an email, I can, I can send to you uh, that lists the kind of policies and procedures for working off campus for international students. All right, so that is the end of my presentation. Um, in just a few short seconds, our students are going to be turning on their videos and we'll start the Q&A portion. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is this is our email, thinkengine.mcmaster.ca. So if you have any questions or if you need anything, you can email us there or you can WhatsApp me. I know a lot of you are a part of a, one of our groups, so you can message uh, me there as well. And lastly, I just want to remind you about our next webinars. We have a co-op one next week and academic advising one the week after that. Both are Tuesdays and both are at the same times, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. as well. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then we are going to have our students Turn on their videos. Awesome. Okay, so that's everyone. So I'm gonna introduce everybody um, by name and then they're gonna share their program uh, year and where they're from. So we'll start with Jitwan. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Tutwin, I'm from India and I'm doing my third year in computer science. Awesome, thank you. And Roxania? Um, hi, I'm Roxania and I'm in first year um, iBiomed and I'm from Gondor, China. Thanks, Roxania. Uh, Aditya? Hey, my name is Aditya. I'm from Doha, basically, and I'm in first year engineering. Thank you. Uh, Aras? Hey, my name is Aras. Uh, I'm in my fourth year of Bachelor's of Technology and I'm from Pakistan. Um, Fabiola. Hi there, my name is Fabiola. I am in second year chemical engineering and I'm from southern Mexico. And Saida. Hey everyone, my name is Saida. I'm in my fourth year of chemical engineering and I'm from Jordan. Awesome. And last but not least, Rafi. Oh, Rafi, you're muted. Hi, I'm Rafi. I'm from Bangladesh. I'm in my second year of electrical engineering. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So our first question that I'm going to uh, put to our uh, student panelists is twofold. So first, I'm going to ask you guys to talk about your first experiences arriving at McMaster University. So what was orientation like? What was welcome week, like? Welcome week like? How was moving into residence? And then I'm going to ask you to share a little bit more about your first year in general. Um, you can talk a little bit about your experiences throughout that year so our students know what to expect coming in next year. So Chitwan, we'll start with you. Uh, so for my first experience being a McMaster student was through the Welcome Week, the orientation, and it was such a wonderful experience. And being an international student, I think we all need that experience to kind of familiarize ourselves with the new environment and meet new people and the friends. And then uh, my student ambassador, my student mentor, they gave me a campus tour and that was a good connection for me to have because for all the questions that I had, I just went to them and asked the questions. So for my first year in general as computer science student, I myself come from a non-programming background. So the first semester itself is very very comfortable for international students and for any student in general because you're given many options to go for electives and then you're you have your core mandatory comp sci and math courses so in general first year 
easy, not easy, but like comfortable to get used to. Just put in the work and you'll get the benefits of it all. And then all the TAs, the professors, everyone is very helpful in the program. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Roxania. Um, when I first arrived at uh, McMaster University, it was during the move in day, and I got to meet a lot of red suits, uh, aka like the engineering representatives. Um, they're amazing. They helped me to carry my stuff upstairs, and I talked to them, and they're super like enthusiastic. And um, I'm like during the welcome week, they're everywhere. Um, they won't leave you alone. <laughs> Uh, so basically, if see if they see you, you're by yourself. They'll come talk to you. They'll find you um, other other students that you can talk to, like from different programs. They just connect to you, like just make the connection. And um, I actually got to like make a couple friends with like some red suits, and we're still in touch. And they give me a lot of like advice on like how to choose my stream uh, second year, which is like what I'm considering right now. And um, it's just overall like, super good experience. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what residence uh, were you in, Roxania? Um, I was in bait, which is like the sweet style, and then I had like three uh, roommates, and each of us gets a single room. Uh, it was great, ex great experience, and I got to learn more cooking than before and being more independent. Uh, it was it was just great. And then first year experience um, was pretty good, but due to coronavirus due to coronavirus it gets cut off a bit but it's overall like super amazing awesome thank you all right uh aditya uh well so i came on campus like three to four days before the move-in day so they had this little event called uh ignite that was just for international students and like I would actually advise every international student to take part in this because it's not any ex it's not extra cost or anything. It's just you just have to pay the same amount, and it's like it's only for international students. And you get an opportunity, you you get this chance to go around Hamilton. And I actually felt like this Hamilton is home. Once after those three days, I felt like this place is amazing. I belong here. So yeah, that was like my first experience after coming to campus. And then obviously the welcome week was amazing. Uh, we had a couple of events called Faculty Fusion, uh, the Rep Tunnels. The Rep Tunnel is basically uh, all the rep, uh, uh, reps from all different uh, faculties just putting their hands like this and we running through all of them, giving them high fives and a bunch of other things. And yeah, so basically that was all fun. And talking about my first year experience, I had a lot of ups and downs. It was difficult at times. At times you might feel homesick, but obviously you have uh, uh, many people who can help you out here. So if you feel alone, if you feel uh, unhappy, you can really go talk to people, talk to this thing, uh, Student Wellness Center, for example. So yeah, and it also gave me like an opportunity to like uh, discover some things about me, which I would have never found out. Like, I learned how to cook like back in the day. I was just like, oh no, cooking, no, that's not my thing. But now I know how to cook. And like, I like to go on like tra uh, hiking trails, walk around a bit, enjoy the nature, scenery, as the campus is also like super beautiful. So, like, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Aditya. All right. Uh, Aris, you want to talk about uh, your, um, uh, your first experiences and your first year? Yeah, for sure. Um, so first day on campus was uh, during Welcome Week when I came in. Um, it's definitely very overwhelming uh, seeing like a big campus, seeing a lot of new people. Um, but that soon, like that feeling soon went away when I met, uh, met the reps and just kind of seeing how friendly they were. Uh, everyone is really involved and it really gives you a sense of community. So it's really easy to talk to people. Um, when I met my few um, uh, upper year reps, um, they offer, offered me help to walk to my classes. They showed me like the best food places, the best places to study. 
so I real, so it didn't feel like I was going on a tour. It felt like I was just chatting up with a friend, and he's just showing me around. So that sense um, of belonging is re- is very real, and even if you're coming from a different country, you will feel that place that it is very much like home. Like people do care about you. Uh, and that's something that um, definitely carried on to my first year where if I needed help with anything, I would just hit up some, some of the reps like, hey, remember me, I need help in X, Y, Z. Can you please direct me somewhere? And they're really super helpful and always there to help out. And I think like that's kind of like something that really helped me get through first year. If I needed most of anything, any help, I got through there and made really smooth for me in the end. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, uh, Fabiola. Um, my welcome week experience was great. Uh, definitely uh, long enough for me to kind of be familiar with the campus, know where my classes are, and be excited to start school. Um, I really liked that we had that week to inter- get introduced with like the people that we uh, are going to be in the program, but as well as uh, people in residence who we, we lived close to uh, for the year. Um, my engineering one experience was great. Definitely a learning curve like everyone. Um, the first two weeks are probably high school review for the most part. And then you kind of just start adding to that knowledge. So um, it was nice to start off with review and get used to the lecture s- the styles and stuff that is different from high school. Um, after the first round of midterms, I think you kind of get a hang of what to do to study and like be prepared and what by like second semester you're pro and you like have all, everything down which is good awesome thank you all right Saida uh so my first days at McMaster were really exciting um I I arrived to Canada on the first day of welcome week so I moved in to my residence which was Wallingford Wallingford is the all-woman residence and it was amazing I had no sleep for 23 hours but all every moment I had on that day was exciting and um it was just you can feel the family feel feel like on campus you can feel that everybody cares about you and just wants to help Um, and for my first year for sure it was challenging it had it ups and downs uh, but overall it was enriching Um, you come out of that experience a new person a new improved person Um, and overall it was um, it was hard, I'm not gonna lie and say it wasn't hard, but uh, everyone can do it. Um, if you have the courage and the confidence, you'll be able to get through it. Awesome, thank you. All right, Rafi, do you wanna talk a little bit about when you arrived at campus in your first year? Yeah, so um, I came came to like Canada for the first time um, three days before a welcome week started because I attended this like new thing called Ignite that Aditya touched on above. Um, I came here all by myself, like with one suitcase, had like just bare essentials with me. And like came in and then the whole campus was completely deserted. So my first impression was a little, I would say, I wouldn't say like the best. And I was like, oh, no one's here. I was kind of feeling uh, lonely, a little sad. And then all of a sudden I hear like a knock on my door and it's one of those CAs, like two of my CAs actually came in and then they're like, oh, uh, I didn't know you, you were like moving in so early. And then they sat down with me and they chatted with me and then just told me about everything. And then from then it was just all like uphill. And like, it was really amazing. Like Ignite was amazing. A welcome week itself was really, really good. Like for example, uh, like engineering, like engineering the red suits have like this tradition, like obviously I won't spoil it for like the people coming in but you have to like look out for it. Like I went from like being so scared to like absolutely loving the um, Fireball family. It was really good. Um, as far as like uh, first year university goes, um, I wouldn't say it was easy because I, I struggled a little bit at first um, because uh, even though it was like high school uh, material, material uh, it really didn't translate well to um, university for me because uh, the teaching style here in Canada was different. I wouldn't say it was like bad different. It was just different for me, but it took me a little while. It was a learning curve, 
but once I went, get got above the curve, like I started like getting good grades. And one of the most, uh, one of the course I enjoyed the most was uh, a design course where you have to make a mechanical arm where you have to 3D print. Like I've never seen a 3D printer in my life. And when I saw that, that was pretty cool to me. Um, yeah, and we have another project course where you collaborate with your like, um, with like three other um, your colleagues. And then the best part is that you make like lifelong friends there. Like I still talk to some of my project partners and it's pretty cool. Um, and then first year, I would say it's a struggle for quite a lot of students. So if you're struggling, I don't be scared because there's so many like, different options for you to like get help from like there obviously prof uh, like the prof uh, office hours and then this TA office hours even aside from that the upper year engineering students they actually ho host uh, extra help session that is not even affiliated with any of the course they just do it to like help the first years which I think is pretty amazing um, yeah. yeah I've been to like a lot of one of those like sessions and like they did like past question papers and like there were like so many exams where the the questions were similar to that and I actually did really well because I attended those free um, uh, sessions. So yeah, I think okay. first year was a blast for me. Thanks, Ravi. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is um, I have students here with me today from all of our programs. So what we'll do is we'll start with, um, we'll start with uh, iBiomed. Uh, so Roxania will go first, and then we'll go to Aditya, who will talk about first year engineering. And then Rafi, Saida, and Fabiola can talk about upper year engineering. And then we'll go, uh, Aris can talk about BTEC, and then Chitwan will talk about uh, computer science. Um, and so they're going to describe just a little bit about, you know, what their program's like, what type of, um, what they're studying, and um, that sort of thing. So you can kind of familiarize yourself with their different uh, programs. So Roxania, do you want to start with iBiomed? Um, yeah, sure. So basically iBiomed shares the first, most of the sh uh, for, uh, common first year courses with engineering one. This includes um, math, like all the maths, physics, uh, chemistry. And, but other than that, we, uh, for iBiomed, we have our, we have our own design course and also we have cell bio cell biology with all the health sciences students so for um for the um design course you basically were it, it's a group project based uh project course and uh there's th there's four projects throughout the whole year and you will work with um different people in your design studio and um so basically you will work uh, on multiple like medical problems, you're you are supposed to design like a solution to these kind of problems. This may be like a mechanical solution or like or like electrical solution or like mechatronics. Uh, it has like it could be anything. Um, and in this course, you will also learn about coding and also three D modeling using Inventor Autodesk Inventor. Um, I have never like learned anything about 3D modeling and I think I've improved so much throughout course because I, I actually found it interest, uh, interesting. And for coding, um, everyone has a fair start, no matter what, uh, no matter if you touched coding before or not, uh, everyone starts like fresh. They're just gonna teach you all the basics and then start, uh, start building from all the basics to like advanced solutions. Um, for cell biology, um, as I mentioned before, it's a course uh, we shared with all the health sciences students. Um, you learn a lot about uh, molecular biology, and um, there are a, a lot of like interesting topics. And I would say first semester has more content and stuff that you need to understand and memorize than second semester. But if you can get over first semester, uh, you're pretty set for the second semester. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Roxania. Um, Aditya, do you want to talk about Engineering One? Yeah. So it's pretty much the same as iBiomed, but as they have one P10, it gets, we get that as three courses. Uh, one is one CO3 graphic and design. That is basically the ones which she was talking about in uh, Roxanne was talking about in which 
we basically have to design uh, 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 and uh, basically something related to computer programming as well, but not the same. But it's it's kind of like chatting. Basically, it's chatting. And then the next thing which I'm going to talk about is the uh, uh, one PO three professional practice in which we kind of uh, have to uh, examine a, a patient. We got to figure out what the problems of a patient is, and we got to suggest in our problems, our, our suggest in solutions with engineering related uh, concepts. And then we basically also got, get an opportunity to like create a company. We have to actually present it in such a way that as if we are actually a firm who is presenting a design idea or of some kind. And then moving on to the programming part, we have one ends one year for computation, which is basically based on Python. So everyone, as she said, everyone gets a, a basic start. No one knows anything about it. We start from the beginning. Everyone, everyone gets taught everything from the basics. And the only difference, with, another difference between uh, iBiomed and Eng1 is that we get to choose our elective. There is no like required elective in particular. As uh, in iBiomed, you have to take cell biology, but we get to choose our own electives. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Thanks, Aditya. Um, one thing I will mention actually is starting this fall, um, uh, uh, those um, engineering courses, uh, some of the ones that Aditya was mentioning are going to get combined into a big design course. So it's actually going to be similar to the um, design course that Roxanio was talking about. Um, so that's something really exciting for our uh, incoming fall cohort. And uh, we'll definitely be sharing more information about that coming, coming soon. All right, so Fabiola, do you want to talk about your upper year program and kind of how that works? Yeah, of course. Um, so I am in, I just, uh, uh, well, I'm close to finishing second year. So this time last year, we were getting ready to kind of choose um, our stream selection process. And I think throughout, especially second sem semester, um, there are a lot of um, in information sessions of different programs that you can apply to and uh, upper year students are super helpful in terms of giving you everything that you need to like kind of choose what you want to go into and the courses that engineering one sets you up for kind of gives you a good idea too. So I chose chemical. Um, um, it was my first choice and I'm kind of got it, which was nice. Um, chemical, it's really good because from like a broad first year engineering, you kind of go into your stream, which is way smaller. And chemical is around, I think our cohort was like 80 people this year, which is really nice because you, the profs really get to know you by name, which is so different from like first year where it's bigger uh, classrooms. Um, and it really just improved the way that I learned. And I think for me, I just really like the smaller classrooms and the community of professors that kind of get to be with along the years. Um, yeah, chemical is great. Um, it's more about kind of uh, manufacturing and just kind of in and out and kind of what happens in between. So I really liked uh, that, but I'm really glad that first year gave me kind of the knowledge of like materials and coding that, um, that it was good to experience. Awesome, thanks Fabiola. Okay, Saida, do you, uh, I also think you're also chemical engineering. Do you wanna talk a little bit about it too? Yeah. So yeah, I am in my fourth year of chemical engineering. Um, uh, Fabiola sort of explained exactly what chemical engineering is. Um, it's manufacturing, bio-based. Um, it has nothing to do with chemistry. Um, and third, what I love about chemical engineering is that it opens up a lot of doors for you in terms of what industries you can you can join after graduation or for your internship. Um, for example, I worked at Honda, like so automotive um, industry. Uh, I'm gonna be working for PepsiCo for the summer, so food and beverages. Uh, um, there is a pharmaceutical com uh, pharmaceutical industry. Um, honestly, any industry you can think of, uh, you would need chemical engineers in, especially in the oil and gas or renewable energy industry. Um, what what like second and third and fourth year entails is very specific courses in terms of like fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
and the faculty is amazing and the faculty is a very sweet loving faculty um, most of our professors are uh, up for having a one-on-one -on -one conversations with you anytime um, not only about stuff academic stuff you can also have conversations about your um, uh, your career and um, you know what you want to do after graduation and whatnot uh so yeah awesome thanks saida uh rafi do you want to talk about electrical yeah so um so as you know i'm in like second year electrical engineering and um i think this is a really um very very interesting program because um you it's a mix between i would say uh it was like half hardware and then half software because half of my courses, I have to like learn software because many people would think the electrical, there isn't much like coding in it, but like I was surprised at how much coding uh, there is. And that's actually really good because now that I'm finding out that I really enjoy coding, so which is really good. So if you're really unsure about which side to lean on, electrical is really broad based. So uh, you will be expert in both coding and you'll be expert in the el electric wiring and circuit stuff. That's really good. So for example, um, second year, we had a brand new co course. Uh, it's called 2DX4. So there we used a my MSP microcontroller to basically make a LiDAR system which maps the environment around the room. Uh, my project was actually due yesterday and I was up all night finishing that. Uh, and it was really stressful, but once I actually got the um, my room's environment modeled into a 3D, and when I hit enter and it actually rendered my 3d model into my computer it was such a hallelujah moment i've been working for that for the four months and we actually worked it felt so good so for that course we have been uh, they have been building our skills from like day one so we needed python c java and assembly um so we learned python in first year in 1d04 and then in first semester of second year we learned java and c um, and then to wire the electric, to wire all the components, we learned a lot from the other courses I took in second semester. So it all culminated and then I had to use all my knowledge into that one course, which was pretty good. So it show, really goes to show that I'm not wasting my time uh, learning all this stuff because now I can put this project as under my personal project in my resume. And honestly, uh, companies here really, really look for um, people who are who are doing like projects and like hands-on stuff because uh, you can learn as much as you want, but if you don't actually know how to apply in real life situation, it's really not very useful. So I think that's what Mac excels at a lot is that we have a lot of hands-on hands-on learning, which is really great because you learn better. So yeah, awesome. so that's a little gist of like electrical second uh, second year. Awesome. Thanks, Rafi. Um, and I just want to mention uh, before we move on is um, if you are if you liked kind of how they described chemical and electrical, we have students from all of our different disciplines on the digital ambassador program. So if you wanted to chat with someone about materials or uh, um, computer engineering or uh, mechanical engineering, you can connect directly with them either by email or Instagram and uh, get the inside track on those disciplines as well. Okay, RS, you want to talk about BTEC? Yeah, sure. So um, with, with BTEC, um, what we have is uh, there are three direct entry programs, um, which are biotechnology, automation, and automotive. Um, so basically what the difference between these three are, um, they're all very specialized within their own streams. So biotech is mostly based on the technologies used within, um, within the health sector or pharmaceuticals. And you would learn like the ins and outs of how would you integrate technology in a in kind of like a health sector um, versus automotive engineering, which is more on working with cars and how to make them more um, like first learn how they're made and then how to work with them and then kind of like what's the future of cars. So you take courses on hybrid vehicles, you take courses where you will learn the internal working of an engine, fluid mechanics and kind of like the ins and out of everything that goes into it. And then the last one is automation. So automation is based on robotics and industry 4.0. So what that is, is how um, 
how the future of uh, industries is changing and it's going to be all automated. Uh, so if you see those um, videos from uh, like any factory line where they have giant robot arms, what we do in automation is learn how to program them and work with them. So it kind of gives you like a really good, uh, it's, it gives you like a really good pathway. Um, like once you enter first year, like you know what your program is giving you, you know what career outcomes there are, and you know exactly what, what you're gonna learn. So each thing we do is kind of like a step-by-step -step process is in first year we learn electricity, second year we go with, um, uh, second year we go with advanced electricity, then we learn control theory, and then we'll uh, do our courses in ro robotics and motion controllers. So everything kind of builds on top of each other. And in a sense, um, I like that way of approach where I, I know what I'm doing is gonna lead up to some to something even bigger, even bigger as we, pro as we progress on. A specific thing about BTEC is there are a lot of uh, lab hours that we do. So most times we're in, in the lab working with these robots and learning how to program them. And then we go back to class to learn more theory about it. And then we go back to the lab and do more on, and do more work on it. So in a sense, what we get is a lot of practice. So when we do apply for our co-ops, we have more hands-on experience, which the employers like as, oh, you worked on this specific machine that I have in my factory. Well, come work for me, please. <laughs> so it's kind of like that. Um, definitely very exciting. I like it. Uh, so far, it's been a great journey. And um, if you do choose to do it, um, it'll be amazing. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Last but not least, computer science. So for computer science, I feel that it's a great program to ease into university life because for the first semester itself, we have three electives and then two core mandatory computer science courses. So every, every comp sci major has a, the opportunity to do a minor in any field that they're interested in. So a lot of my peers have went on to minor in business and a lot of them have done minor in French, my, minor in music. So whatever holds your interest, you can go for it. And then beginning from first year itself, our assignments are, a lot of our assignments were project-based and those projects were like very relevant for the industry at this current time. So I was able to mention all of the projects that I did in my first year on my resume and for my co-op and internship interviews, the employers wanted to know how I did those and it was really great talking point during my interviews. For the upper year, second, third, the courses, like you're still able to continue with your minor and then the mandatory computer science courses are more technical. But then I would like to mention that even if you come from a non-programming background, you shouldn't, it's not difficult to get used to the computer science life at McMaster because uh, like computer science and Mac and in whole is very collaborative. Like everybody thrives on collaboration. So everybody is eager to help out each other. All your friends will help you out. There's no competition. So that's a good thing to have at McMaster and for, for your new university life, I would say. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so we're almost out of time, but I wanna do one more uh, around the group. So what I'm gonna ask you is a quick, quick note on if you've done any extracurriculars, and then um, a quick note on what your favorite part about Hamilton is. All right, so why don't we go backwards through the list? So why don't we start with you, Chitwan? And, um, and then we'll spend the last few minutes this way. So my favorite thing about Hamilton would be the food scene and the hiking trails and the waterfalls. So Jane Street is perfect too for the arts and the food scene, really great place to go to during summer. And then for extracurriculars, I've been part of two of Mc engineering clubs. One was wellness committee and the other is McMaster Start Coding. As you mentioned before, like even if there's not a club that you're interested in, you can go for and like help creating it. And I was part of the creation of McMaster Start Coding. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, Rafi, favorite part of Hamilton and any extracurriculars? Um, so the favorite part of Hamilton would be the same as what Chilmon said. It would be the food scene because um, surprisingly, Hamilton is really, really big. Um, so we really only um, experience like the downtown area and like the McMaster area, but it really uh, expands beyond that. So if you can travel just a little bit more, there are like so many hidden gems that I've like found that I, that's like one of my go-to do things at, like, on the weekends where I have a little time. So I just take the bus. It takes a little while. It takes like 45 minutes, an hour to like go somewhere. 
but uh, once you go there and like find out new restaurants like out, out out on the mountain like it's really nice because like it's like a really like a getaway thing for you um and um first year i did not um join any clubs but i went to because uh for clubs it works like you can either join and put your time commitment to it or you can just go and like experience the uh experiences they offer you so first year i tried not i didn't join any clubs i just went and I went to one of these um Korean clubs where I met so many international students. There's so many friends there. Um, I, my my best friend I found her from like there. Um, and then for other extracurricular activities, the first year I got a job, and then second year I got a job here, like in the engineer recruitment. So I guess that would be uh, extracurricular as well. Um, so yeah, I have two jobs now, and with the workload and everything. Oh yeah, and in second year I also joined the um sumo box club, which is a competition of engineering um, engineering students who come together and they, they build this uh, small robot with like all, a lot of specification. And you know how like sumo wrestling works? It's basically essentially that, but you take like robots and then like eight robots fight in like a circle and then like whoever stands in the circle wins. Unfortunately, we didn't get to do finish my our like robot. Like we were halfway done with it because of the coronavirus, like the, the whole event got canceled. So that was a little bummer, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Rafi. Okay, Saida. Uh, so in terms of extracurriculars, I was part of Engineers Without Borders, which is sort of a club that uh, uses engineering to solve problems in the world, uh, social problems in the world. Um, I also volunteered at um, a foundation called Daughters for Life. And uh, for next year, I'm hoping to join uh, the Women in and women up women and gender equity network on campus um in terms of what i love about hamilton is that it's um uh, it's sort of like a, a small community but not too small that it's a small town where you can't do anything there's literally any cuisine that you can think of there's a lot of activities you can do um, on and off campus but at the same time it's not Toronto so you don't have to deal with the traffic or you don't have to deal with the, the noise um, and the jam so I, overall Hamilton is a great city um, yeah awesome thank you uh, Fabiola um, I really like Hamilton in the summer and the springtime with the music scene and food scene there's a lot of cool restaurants to visit and a lot of like live music and in shows around in the daytime and the nighttime it really varies so I really like that um kind of gets you away from the school life and and it's always good to have a study break um in terms of my clubs I joined a club second semester of first year and um I was part of Engineering Without Borders where I went um uh, I volunteered every week in downtown Hamilton to help um new Im uh, immigrant and like families children from like elementary school to middle school we helped them in a homework club so we kind of helped them with uh just basic homework it was really nice to hang around um you know young children I miss my siblings so I think that also helped with my homesickness and it just it was nice to like give back to like the immigrant community here in Canada um uh I'm involved with the McMaster Engineering Society during welcome weeks uh by being an engineering representative that's really fun and it it, it helps me kind of give back to the help that I received my first year in welcome week and um this year I'll be uh, with the chemical engineering club working in their conference and stuff like that. So it's really good to be involved, especially because, um, yeah, school is really important, but I think what drives you is the stuff that you do outside of school and it makes you a better student and overall like well-rounded. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, RS? Yeah. So what I like about Hamilton is that, um, like in the springtime, Hamilton is really great for, um, like, photography and just exploring in, in, in general. Uh, Hamilton is known to be the city of waterfalls. Um, it has over a hundred waterfalls within the city. So um, in my free time, I like to explore those. My goal is to hit, hit up every single one before I can graduate. So far, so good. Uh, it's actually pretty amazing. Um, if you just want to like, go for a hike or like explore a new uh, place, it has, Hamilton has a lot of like, like conserve areas that they can go uh, go and explore um and even like 
right behind campus, we, um, we have Coots Paradise, which is an amazing trail and it mm -hmm. leads up to a great point, which if you're going for like, uh, like, like a sunrise walk, I would definitely recommend that. Nice. Um, uh, my involvement on campus, I would say um, one, one of the greatest one was um, I was part of the Delta Hacks organizing co committee. Um, so Delta Hacks is a hackathon uh, ran on McMaster University. It does serve over 800 people all across North America. So it's a very, it's a very, it's very interesting to lead an event that um, not only not only is catered towards the, the students of your campus, but students all across Ontario and even all across Canada that can come over and see what McMaster has to offer. So leading that event um, was a great deal of pleasure and just kind of like seeing how, uh, seeing what goes into leading such a big event was um, honestly a great opportunity for me. And you get to meet a lot of new people and a lot of different, a lot of different working styles and definitely experience is something you should gain um, when you're on campus grounds as there is much to learn every corner of campus. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, last two. Aditya, then Roxania. Um, so first, my favorite things about Hamilton, I would say the hiking trails. It's, there's one right behind my residence, as I mentioned before. The Coots Paradise one is like pretty fun if you just want to relax and after starting or like a morning run it would be really good for that and uh, all the waterfalls because there, there's a couple of waterfalls which i think everyone would enjoy and it's, it's basically just a bus ride away be it five minutes or 45 minutes it's, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal just go on weekends have fun and uh, extracurricular activities uh, well i volunteered for data hacks that was pretty fun uh, organizing it and stuff like that was like pretty give me a good learning experience and then I also have a job at the recruitment office which kind of like gives me the opportunity to contact like get in touch with a lot of future international students so that gives a really good experience like telling your story to somebody listening to their story and a bunch of other things and uh, uh, yeah so this is something which not many I didn't know before coming here so we have this thing called intramural sports so that's pretty fun to take part in. Uh, basically, we can uh, create our own team and take part in different sports. At times, you end up uh, taking part in a couple of sports which you didn't even know existed. I, I personally didn't have a specific experience, but I would say people, I got confused here between football and soccer because here, the thing which we call football back at home is called soccer. And football here is American football, so yeah. So it gave me a good opportunity to learn that sport. And for all the cricket fans out there, I think we have a intramural uh, tournament in the every winter semester. We have indoor cricket, so that's pretty fun. So you should really try that out. And yeah, so it, this also gives us a good way, good opportunity to like just relax, have fun, do anything. Uh, so yeah. Thanks, Aditya. Okay, last up, Roxania. So in first year, I joined the um, uh, McMaster Marching Band and it gave me the opportunity to, le to learn a new instrument. And other than that, I also participated in Sumo Unfortunately, we didn't get Hold on, we're losing you, Roxania. But, um, I also, um, sorry, my internet. We heard you talk about the marching band. Okay, um, so I also participated in sumo bots, like Rafi mentioned, but I didn't get to finish it because of because of the coronavirus thing. And other than that, I've also participated in like some science competitions because I'm like a fan of biology, and also like some research uh, competitions that I got to work with my project groups, and those are amazing. Uh, and I'm also working in the engineering recruitment office and my colleagues Aditya and Rafi are, are amazing and the staffs are also amazing too. And that's like pretty, like they colorize my life on campus. So it's not just like academics, but there, I also have a life outside of like school. Awesome. Yeah. What's your favorite part of Hamilton? Uh, I would say um, I haven't been around much, but 
I really like the quietness in the, of the city and it's like a great place to study. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Roxania. Okay, so we went just a few minutes over, um, but I want to thank everybody from all around the world for tuning in and joining us here today. Uh, like I mentioned, don't forget next Tuesday co-op webinar and the Tuesday after that academic advising webinar. So I can't wait to see you there. And a huge thank you to all of our tremendous uh, student panelists who were so wonderful today. And, um, and thank you to everybody who joined us. And uh, we will see you next week for our next webinar. And uh, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.